Okay, the first problem is gives you the f of x equals x cubed function, says make a graph. Now I haven't gone through the details of making this graph because everybody knows how to make that table and everybody knows how to make the graph. Just be sure you include negative one half and one half so you see how flat the graph gets here because that affects the shape of the graph in a way that's going to affect the accuracy of your estimates, right? Yep. Now, I would have been better off if I had put one out here and two out here, okay? I'd had a more accurate graph. I don't have to use the same scale here that I use here. Unless I want to do the inverse function by reflecting through the 45 degree line, then I have to have equal scales, but that's not important because we can do the inverse function just by switching columns, okay? Now, what's the next thing? We're asked to graph asked to estimate. Now by estimate, using the graph, it doesn't mean go to the calculator and find the answer. Okay? We want to estimate f of 1.3. Okay? That is what it asks, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Because that's what people have been writing down. Yeah. Okay? I hope it is, because that's what I did. So estimate f of 1.3. What's that mean? It means find your y equals f of x value if x is 1.3 because y is your f of x, right? And we have to understand that. We have to understand that's what the picture is telling us. So we go over here and we find 1.3. How'd I do? A little bit above 1. That seemed like it's about maybe 1.3. I think it's a little too far to the right, but it's pretty close. So anyhow, we're just doing an estimate, although we try to do the estimate as accurately as we can. And then what do we do? Well, we find out what the corresponding y value is. So, you know, on a vertical line, the x value stays 1.3. So x is still 1.3 when you get here, right? Okay? So x is still 1.3. And y equals f of 1.3 is the value here. Okay? Now my projection line went down and then I, that smudge came out a little low. When I saw this point, I was thinking it was about 1.7. Okay? Now that's low, because I didn't have a very accurate graph. So it's not going to compare very well, but neither are your estimates. Unless you draw a really accurate graph. I got like 1.1. Huh? I got like 1.9. Yeah, well, you probably didn't flatten the graph out enough here, so it didn't get steep enough after it passed 1. Okay? Remember what I said. These points are very close to the x axis. Yeah, one eighth is very close to one. You divide this one unit interval in half, divide that in half, divide that in half, you get your one eighth, right? So, anyhow, x is still 1.3. Just to ask the Now, I'm getting approximately 1.7. The actual value is a little over 2. Okay? So, just so as not to show off, I did a small x interval there, right? Which pretty much ensured that I wasn't going to get a great estimate. Okay? And if I'd have been trying to show off, it would have been embarrassing because I still wouldn't have gotten a good result. Okay. Now, so there's our estimate. Now, what's the actual value? Because the next thing it asks you to do is take your calculator and find out what f of 1.3 should have been, right? Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. 
play three to the third. Cubed. Okay, 1.3 cubed, right? Which is going to be around 2.1, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what, what what they actually get? 2.197. Actually, closer to 2.2. If I just round it off to two significant <coughs> figures, or you can do 2.19 or whatever it is. Okay, but 2.2 is significantly different than my stupid estimate. Okay? It wasn't stupid. It wasn't a very accurate estimate though because of the characteristics of this graph. Okay? Okay, then what does it ask you to do? Doesn't it ask you to find a percent error? Percent, error. percent yeah. difference between your estimate and the calculator's output, right? Well, percent difference is very easy concept. It's usually defined by formulas, so nobody understands it. How much are we off? which is low by 0 0.5. Does everybody understand where I got the 0 0.5? Okay. That's well, because from 1.7 to 2.2 is 0.5, right? We could do the subtraction. If you have to use your calculator to do the subtraction, I hope you don't have to, but if you do, Okay, I think you really need to do that calculation in your head or on paper and then check it with your calculator if you can't do it confidently in your head. But it's low by 0.5. I'm not going to go through the details of that, but you just, you know, subtract. So you just subtract it. That's all you're doing. It's what? So you're just subtracting it. That's all. The yeah, that's how oh, much it's low. Oh, we're not going to divide it? No, you're huh? Like well, we're not done yet. Oh, we're not All done I'm yet. making is okay. a statement. I'm saying it's low by 0 0.5. Oh, okay. Do we understand that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I was going to say, okay. what's the percent difference? We have to understand that to understand what percent difference means. Okay? okay. Two point two is pretty close to what? Point four, right? That's not right. One fourth, point two five. Okay, it's approximately point two six, I think. Or twenty six percent. Okay, so we're off by twenty six percent. That's not terrible. But with a careful graph, we could probably get that down lower than 10% for this particular estimate. And when you do these, I want you to try to do an accurate estimate because it helps you look more carefully and closely at what a graph is telling you, which is very important. Okay? I will say that your standard mathematics curriculum you've been through is really bad at interpreting what graphs are telling you. Okay? It's really terrible. It's terrible that you come into this course and can't take that graph and estimate this without me having to explain why. That doesn't mean you're terrible. It just means yeah. that you never had <laughs> to think about what graphs are telling you in any significant way. Okay? Most of you. That's the only explanation I have for smart people, and that's you not being able to do this when they come in. So we got to spend time doing it. 
And that's the reason for this assignment. I'm going to rub your nose in it for your own good. It's not bad stuff to have your nose rubbed into, okay? It's like having your nose rubbed into a warm, lightly scented, pleasant that of bath water? Well, you don't want to have your head <laughs> So I don't have a good analogy, but you get the idea. Okay, it's, it's something nice. You will enjoy it, I hope.